Michigan at the 41. What a hit! Clowney just says, I'll take care of business right here. I'm tired of that play, no question. Well, Taylor Luan, he's got to do better than that. Wasn't even his guy. That wasn't his assignment. The people that said that was his assignment, you know, don't know the game. Taylor prepared for that game like an NFL player. No one blocked Clowney better than him. If you're going to be in the NFL, you're going to be playing with guys like Clowney every single week. I think I had one of my best games. Didn't have any sacks. And that kind of gave me a little bit of relief knowing that, okay, I think I'm ready to go to the NFL. You're sitting here, someone comes up to you and says, you're going to be a first-round draft pick. I'm going to give you this much money to play football, or you're going to get no money and keep doing the same thing. You would be doing regardless. So I talked to Coach Hoke. I told him if I was making the decision, I don't think you're where you need to be yet. And some of it is leadership, some of it is maturity, some of it is how you prepare consistently. I was still unsure. What if you get hurt? What if you don't play as well? I'm 21 years old. I just turned 22. I'm just, you know, someone tell me what to do. I weighed the pros and cons, and the more I thought about it, the easier it got. Because you got a place like this. You play in the Big Ten, University of Michigan. So many great players have won the number 77. And I kind of made the decision, I don't want to be just another guy that played at Michigan. I want to be mentioned with the Jake Longs and the John Jensen's. That's one of my dreams, is just to impact a school like that. We went through four years, and we haven't won a Big Ten championship. We have 42 of them. I want that 43rd. When you're talking to the media and you're representing the University of Michigan, you're representing 133 years before you. We got a lot of young guys, especially in the interior. All these guys are first year starters. Him coming back, he accepted a new hat to put on as a coach, as a leader for a lot of young offensive linemen we have in the program. These guys got to understand that, you know, we're still playing football. It's kind of just getting that preparation in and getting better every single week. Because if you don't get better each week, you're not, not going to win a Big Ten championship. The reasons that he came back to me are admirable in terms of wanting to be a captain, wanting to win a championship, wanting to lead these young kids. The one thing that he talked about and we talked about is, okay, if you're going to come back, you made this decision, and you want to be one of the greatest offensive tackles ever played in Michigan, let's talk about being elite. Not about being a good player or a great player, but what's it going to take for you to be elite? For the last 10 months, has done everything that we've asked him to do. Taylor gained 10 to 12 pounds of muscle and lost body fat. 29 to 30 inch vertical jump, he bench presses over 400, he squats over 550 pounds. All those things are, are from a summer of backing up his words as a leader and potential captain with actions. And that was a major reason he came back, to be a captain at the University of Michigan, it's huge. I remember sitting there, it was the last play of the game. I was angry and upset. expired and Michigan hangs on. This is on the seniors, this is on the leadership of this team and uh, extremely poor, poor leadership, especially on my side. Being the one offense captain on this team, I put that offensive performance on myself. We will not come out like this again. I made a lot of bold statements and I stood by them. It's not about, you know, what number am I going to be picked in the first round. If I focus on that now, it's gonna mess up the way I play on Saturdays. So why not focus on Saturdays and look forward to Sundays?